So I had to create things to create my own universe. You know, so I can, so I can exist in a place that I like. Oh. Yeah. Like, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. I didn't go to med school. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Welcome to the Lonely Artist Club. I am your host, Ivana Horvat, and today we have an awesome interview. We have Vaughn Kimmins here, who is a multidisciplinary artist, um, here to talk to me. So, welcome. Hey, hello. <laughs> Thank you. How are you doing today? Today, I'm doing good. I am doing better than yesterday. I know there's a lot of things that you're involved with. We were talking a, a little bit before we started this interview. Um, what do you, what have you been spending your time doing maybe before the pandemic, um, in the arts world? Okay. Um, but be well, before all of this chaos, uh, I mostly work as a, uh, a musician. Um, so singer, songwriter, no production yet. I kind of tinker around with it, but, um, yeah, playing pretty regularly in, in town, like here in Portland, um, something that I'm really passionate about that I love doing. I can't imagine not doing it. Um, so that's what I was doing mainly, I guess, as an artist, what people know me to be. Uh, and I'm also a wardrobe stylist too. So um, I styled a few music videos um, and like some photo shoots and th things like that. Um, well, I gotta say, I do follow you on Instagram and I took like the stylist thing just makes so much sense because I think you, you probably have on the daily like the most interesting outfit that I would have never thought to put together. I really enjoy dressing myself. I mean of course now others but I really enjoy dressing myself because it gives you the space to just create a different world. Um, you know you don't have to even say anything if you have this really amazing outfit that tells a story. Like sometimes I'll think like who do I want to be today? You know if there's like a a certain like vibe or like look that I'm going for. I was uh, in, it was last summer, mm -hmm. I was in Guadalajara. Um, but yes, I was working on the video for Ila Bamba. The, the song is called Rio Sueltos. <laughs> Uh, Luz, um, the leader of Ila Bamba, who's a dear friend, asked me to style it. You know what, she's probably said it prior, maybe a week before I got to Mexico. She told everybody I was the art director. And I was like, that's a totally different role. Like, being a wardrobe stylist and then also being the art director, it's a lot of, a lot of pressure, but, but it was so much fun. Like, eight days of me just waking up early and making this video come to life. I'm rather new to doing all of this, um, but this was probably unconventional in the way we organized it and put it together. It wasn't necessarily a mood board. It's kind of like I would get texts from her with just like, this is the vibe. You know, just like all these weird avant-garde Photos, which is great because that's why she asked me to style it because she knew we had the same aesthetic um, of like. How would you describe your aesthetic? Beautifully, the, the beautifully bizarre, avant-garde. I don't know really how how to explain, but we just we really get each other. We like weird things. We like odd beauty. I think one night she texts me and she's like, "The theme is birds," and I was like, "Okay," but like that's it. <laughs> birds. And I was like. I was like, oh gosh, what do I do? <laughs> so that was fun. I kind of had to push myself to, I just listened to the song over and over and over and over and over again and try to just get the feeling of it in my body. That way I could just come up with something and be inspired. And so I, I came up with some ideas and I drew them out. And then I would just 
FaceTime her and show her like, I drew this picture. I was thinking of like something like this and this bird represents this. I bought some bird masks <laughs> and like some gloves and, and bedazzled them, you know, added some tassels, like some colorful like gloves. And I just packed a suitcase with a bunch of just random clothes just in case that I had that were just like very weird or very bright and dramatic. And it was just like, here we go. As a little girl, potentially, you, you were always kind of into the styling component um, and wardrobe and art kind of was a big, played a big role in your life. Um, how did you kind of, how did that evolve as you grew up? Ah, gosh, it's very interesting. I, I had a big imagination as a child, but I still lacked some confidence behind some of these things. When people say that their knees knocked, that's a real thing. <laughs> and that happened at that high school performance. It was like Black History Month, like assembly. And my friend had organized it because we didn't have anything like that at our school because um, it, was, it wasn't a predominantly Black school and they didn't have like some cultural things in place. So my friend had put together, we were all excited. And now here's my big moment to like sing this solo on stage and my knees like were knocking, like bumping into each other. <laughs> what surprises probably a lot of people is that I didn't start performing until I moved to Portland from Chicago, like almost now seven years ago. It wasn't until I, I moved to Portland when I decided to, to start really making, making music. I was, I got here, I think on a Sunday, I was rehearsing by Wednesday and performing by like the following Sunday. Maybe it's the product of being a stolen person on stolen land. Maybe it's the leftover stress from someone where they're mad. Uh, and you have, you have two bands that you play with, right? One is Brown Calculus. Mm -hmm. And I also play with Tribe Mars. Like, was there one moment that sparked your like, all right, like, I'm a badass, like, I've got this, my knees aren't knocking anymore, <laughs> you know? Like, was there well, something like that? Still, they were still knocking. Maybe now they weren't knocking, my heart was just beating really fast. More than just a moment, it was the process that kind of made me realize that I could do this. And the reason I say that is because as soon as we had rehearsals and we felt like we could present ourselves to people, we did very soon. and that access meant a lot to me and really helped me grow. When we started playing in like a venue, like the first venue we played, which I think was Mississippi Pizza, mm -hmm. and we got paid. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> oh my God. And then we started playing every month. And I was like, oh, I'm a working musician. There was just this, this process of realizing how it started to become accessible to me. That's what sparked this like, oh, I got this. I am, I'm a musician. All you do is just, you call yourself that. I am a professional musician. Is there one standout moment in your music career that is just like never to be matched? There is, there was a show that happened maybe two years ago now. And uh, we opened for Diggable Planets. And they are a group that I grew up listening to. And it was at Revolution Hall, so there was really good, the sound was like so good. And that also made me feel very confident because if you can hear yourself well, then you can relax into it. It almost, it almost felt like magic, like things clicked. It's like these nerves were in me, but then when I, like for real, I remember this, like as soon as I touched the microphone, it was it's gratitude, feelings of gratitude, strong feelings of gratitude uh, just washed over me. Um, and it, it made me, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it, it, it boosted my confidence and my feelings of self-worth. And those lights and things, you know, when they put a spotlight on you, it just makes you feel so, you know, the drama is there. So you're just really, 
feeling this adrenaline. And usually in those moments where I'm feeling grateful on stage, I'll just like smile really big because I'm like, hey y'all. I mean, sometimes I do say this. I'm like, look, I'm performing for you. That's, that's crazy, right? Like I always want to do this. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. Did you think I do this? <laughs> That's how I feel every time I perform. I'm like, this is crazy. How would you describe your music? How would you describe your like sound? Tribe Mars is a seven piece band and it is a fusion of jazz, hip hop, soul and funk. Um, like the roots, but with, with singers too. So Tribe Mars definitely feels like this space in my heart that is, feels like home. And then Brown Calculus is a little bit harder to explain. Um, we like to call it intergalactic jazz, meaning like we're the new generation of jazz artists. So we're in essence changing the sound of it. Like it has to change, you know, it can't stay the same. So when we, I think when you wrote the first Brown Calculus song, he's playing some beats for me and I was like, ooh, that one. And he's like, that's the weirdest one I have. And I was like, I know, give it to me. I don't want all this stuff that sounds like everybody else. <laughs> give, it a, give me the weird one. And then I like wrote a song that like night and then I brought it back the next day and it just clicked. I told myself I changed, thought I had my mind all real. To feel this way. Well, me and, I, me and Dre both love Sun Ra, that jazz uh, artist. That's kind of what's informed our sound in a way. Because Sun Ra was always very experimental and the cosmos were very important to him because he believed that the cosmos uh, was a space that Black people could expand and take up because we didn't have that much space here on earth in this reality. Like I was saying, I, I, I'm often, often writing things, um, like creating mantras for myself and they just tend to resonate with other people. So I'm usually trying to encourage myself or uh, love on myself during like a, some, kind, some process. So yeah, art, art films inspire me. Um, I like the color of pomegranates. That's a, a really great film challenging concepts, turning them on their like their head, that inspires me. I'm like, how can we look at this in a different way? How can we push beauty? I know I keep mentioning like beauty and bizarre beauty and all these things, because that's what really inspires me is to show people that there's expansion and there's more space to thrive outside of, of the norm. How has the pandemic affected you as an artist um, and how have you been coping with it? I'm someone who writes at home and I can loop my voice and do all these things, but I don't actually do instrumentation. So not being around my bandmate because he lives cross town and you know, it's quarantine. Um, it's just kind of made me think about who I am because it removed my crutch. Like, how am I still doing this now to just make me feel good and not necessarily fulfill my career? What are some specific songs or photographs or imagery is kind of like a standout thing for you that you would recommend to someone to maybe, this is to show them your style or just like some things that really like stand out for you? I really love this film. It's animated. It's called Kiriku, and it is about, it takes place in West Africa, and the imagery is beautiful. The music is just amazing. Like the story is just, is wonderful. I can watch that on repeat. Esperanza Spaulding, uh, I think she's a genius. I, I haven't heard anybody, like no one else word things or like feelings the way that she does. Are there any like local groups or mentorship program. yes yep. i'm a part of friends of noise and that is an organization here in portland um that puts young people who are interested in being professional in the professional music industry it puts them on real stages and they get paid too it's not just like 
oh, you want to be in a band. It's people who are interested in management and creating merch and just all the aspects of how do I become a musician? Because you don't have to wait till you're an adult. Sadly, we have come to the end. So thank you so much for talking to me today. You're part of the club now, the Lonely Artist Club. Thank you.